Hamza in the Quran is quite a special letter because of its many different cases. Specifically, there are five different cases for Hamza in the Quran, and some were actually discussed in previous lessons. And when I talk about Hamza, I mean these. But not this. This is Alif. So if you want to understand the difference between Hamza and Alif, then check out this video before you go further with this lesson. So there are five cases of Hamza in the Quran. The first one is that when words start with Hamzat Qata and after it comes any letter except for another Hamza, like in this example. <laughs> so Hamzat Qata is pronounced when you keep on reading and when you start at the word. There is no difference. The second case is with words that start with Hamzat al-Wasl and after it comes any letter except for another Hamza. Like in this example. Ya wa so, Hamzat Wasl is dropped when you keep on reading, but it is pronounced when you start at the word. The third case is when Hamzat Qata is followed by another Hamza that has a vowel on it. And this case happens in the Quran with a single word in this example. Which, as you can hear, has a special way of pronouncing it. So these three cases were discussed in detail in these lessons. So please check this lesson out in the same order if you feel you need to understand these cases more or if you want to have more examples. It will also help you understand the coming cases even better. So as for case number four, you will have Hamzat al qata and it will be followed by another Hamza that has Sukun on it. And when that happens, the second Hamza will turn into a long vowel of the same sort as the short vowel on top of the first Hamza. This means that if the first Hamza has Fatha, the second Hamza will become an Alif. And if the first has Dhamma, then the second will become Wow. And if the first Hamza has Kasra, the second will turn into a Ya. That's why the word A'manu, which you don't see in the Quran at all in this way, will turn into A'manu. Because the first Hamza has Fatha, and so the second Hamza will turn into an Alif. So we went from Amanu into Amanu. And for the word Iman, it becomes Iman because the first Hamza had Kasra under it, and therefore the second Hamza turned into Aya, which is the long version of the Kasra. And also, Utu is pronounced as Utu. Because the first Hamza had Dhamma on it, which means that the second Hamza will turn into a Waw. And the examples of the application of this rule is found all around the Quran, so it is a very commonly used rule. And you can already guess why this happens just by trying to pronounce these words in their original forms. Imana. It is turned into Imana just to simplify the pronunciation and to make it easier. Now, so far, case number four is pretty straightforward. And you shouldn't worry about it, since the changes that happen to the word are permanent, since Hamzat Wasl, which we start with, 
is pretty consistent whether you keep on reading or you start at the word it remains the same now let's move to case number five to see how it compares to case number four now case number five is the exact same as case number four with one single difference which is that instead of hamzat qata at the beginning of the word it has hamzat wasl so it is hamzat wasl and it is followed by another hamza. This means that if you keep on reading, hamzat al wasl will be ignored and will be completely dropped, as you would normally do with any word starting with hamzat wasl. But if you start at the word, it will be the exact same case as case number four, which means that the second hamza will turn into the long vowel of the same kind as a short vowel on top of the first Hamza. Now we see this phenomenon happening in only two words in the Quran, and these are Utumina and Ituni. Now the second one is more important than the first, since the first is mentioned only once in the Quran, but the second one was mentioned in many different occasions. Now let's start with the first one. The word Utumina is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And this is how you pronounce it. Notice how I ignored Hamzat Al-Wasl when I kept on reading and I said now I will start reading from that word and let's see what happens. So here, Hamzat al Wasl will be pronounced and it will have Dhamma on top of it. So this means that the second Hamza will turn into the long version of the Dhamma, which is in this case, Wow. So that's why we say, When we start at that word. It is therefore wrong to say, If you start at that word. Now let's check the second word, ituni. First, we will read the ayah without stopping. <laughs> so here I simply ignored Hamzat al wasl at the beginning of the word. And I went directly to the second letter, which is also a Hamza. And that's why I said it like that. But if you start at the word, you will have to pronounce Hamzat al-Wasl. And it will have Kasra under it. So this means that the second Hamza will turn into the long version of the short vowel of the first Hamza. So that's why we will say <laughs> So if you keep on reading, Hamzat al-Wasl will be dropped and you will directly move to the second Hamza. And the conflict between the first and the second Hamza will not exist. So you will move directly to the second Hamza. But if you start at the word, the conflict will exist between the first and the second Hamza. And to get over it, you will have to turn the second Hamza into a long vowel of the same sort as the short vowel of the first Hamza. Which is exactly what we did in case 4. And that's why it is wrong to say ituni if you start at the word and it should be ituni 
So why is this example then so famous for this rule? The reason is simply because of the stopping sign before this word specifically, which will make it more likely that you will start at this word. Other examples don't have the same stopping sign, like in this example. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ اُتُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ اِتُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ So you will more likely keep on reading here rather than stopping and starting at this word. So in short, Hamza in the Qur'an has five cases. If you start with Hamza al-Qata, and it is followed by any letter except Hamza, you will always pronounce it, whether you stop or keep on reading. And if you start with Hamza al-Wasl, and it was followed by any letter except Hamza, Hamza al-Wasl will be dropped if you keep on reading, but it will be pronounced if you start at the word. And if the word starts with Hamzat al qata and another Hamza with a vowel came after it, you will simplify the second Hamza. And fourth, if you start with Hamzat al qata and it was followed by another Hamza that has Sukun, the second Hamza will turn into a long vowel of the same short vowel which is found on the first Hamza. And finally, if you start with Hamzat al-Wasl and it was followed by another Hamza that has Sukun on it, then you will drop the first Hamza if you keep on reading, which means that there will be no changes. But if you start at the word, the second Hamza will then turn into a long vowel of the same short vowel as the first Hamza. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.